welcome back to class. We're glad you came to join us again. Now we're going to talk about how do you stand. Posture. And I don't mean like fancy posture. I mean in general. How do you stand? How do you stand? I don't know. I mean, look at the two of us. We don't stand the same way. We're not exactly, I mean, I'm not even, I don't even have both feet <laughs> together. You seem a little bit more balanced, but that, that's probably well, normal for our personalities. Because I'm teaching, <laughs> too. So this is my actor standing. Normal, maybe a hip is out. Yeah, if we were just chatting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get a lot more comfortable. Yes. If it's not formal, it's not an interview, you're not getting ready to interpret. Um, but how do you stand communicates a lot. It's both how you feel and it's also other people see you and they judge you on how do you stand. And we're clueless on that. Most of the time people just stand the way they've seen their family stand. So if you have a family and everybody stands like that, you'll do that. Yeah. 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 We're influenced by other people's physical behavior. You will. Um, it's really interesting. That actually shows up in deaf culture mm -hmm. often because deaf are very, very observant. Yeah. High yeah. observational skills. They can see body language, gesture, facial expression. It's part of the language. Yeah. So for a deaf person, they're going to notice the way you stand immediately and that communicates something. It does. The way you walk into a room, the way you sit. Yes, posture's huge. You don't have to say a word. Uh, in fact, there was a really interesting guy named Francois, Francois Del Sartre. I'll have that typed up too, so you'll see it in print too. But Del Sartre felt that there were like three different uh, main characters. You could mix yeah. them up to make a lot of different kinds of characters. But the three main characters, first one, your center of gravity, your weight, is very high. So it kind of pulls your feet together. It's like a rope right through the top of your head. Um, your eyebrows become important to communication. Your signing or gesturing has to be high in the zone. Most of the time you would want to pick signs that are very, very specific, maybe even fingerspell a lot more. This is an intellectual character. Try that, will you? Yeah. All right, posture is high. Center of gravity, I feel like it was almost in my shoulders or across my back. Feet probably together. Yeah, high eyebrows, and that's nice. Doesn't she look different now than when she was just standing? You would immediately guess she was a different kind of person. How did it feel inside to do that? A little haughty, but I felt like my commands were going to get done. <laughs> so maybe good in a way, too. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're a shy person, that might be a yes. good thing to practice. Yes. yes, So that you start to seem, you look like you're not so shy. Yeah. The second character is an emotional character. So your center of gravity is here, either contracted or expanded. It's our heart center, we would say. Yeah, and your gestures, or signs would be here. Facially, would be like your nose, area. And most of your gestural choices would be soft and flowing, smooth. Um, and I'm not feeling any different than when I was here. But now, if I were going to teach you and I was going to use this character, you might think I was very, very soft-hearted. 
I am, yeah. kind of. But <laughs> that would be a good character to show on a first day of class to relax the class so they don't get worried you're going to be hard on the grades. So you try. Your center of gravity is this in your chest. Here. So I would feel like this is my emotional character, maybe the butterflies in the stomach kind of feeling, or my heart pounding because of love. All right, let me play with that. Separate my feet here, carry the weight more in my chest. That was beautiful. And even your facial expression, it was all, you had eyebrows, but you smiled a lot more. Yeah, you, there was a lot more breathing, yes, <laughs> actually. Than up here, yes. It seemed more comfortable. Yeah. How did it feel? I connect with this character the most because it's the, maybe the compassionate character. One that reaches out, one that embraces, and that all starts with an urge to connect. Yeah. So I can I connected with that one much more than the heady one. Yeah. Because yeah. it was kind of a natural. Yes, thing. exactly. I think a lot of actors tend to of be course. an emotional yes. center mm -hmm. of gravity for posture. Which is a very special group of people. That's nothing to ever be ashamed of. Yeah. The third character that Del Sari really felt was the strong. Mm -mm -mm. You could mix them again. I'll let you know that. There's not only three kinds of people in right. the world, of course. No. Um, but the third one is a physical character. So your center of gravity is low, yes. like right through the floor, really low. And you would tend to sign or gesture here. Mm. You would tend to use fists or blades here and again your your jaw your jaw becomes important and that's more of a physical character you want to try sure Nice. And you'll notice she didn't stay still. She didn't just, when we say stand, yeah. we don't necessarily mean stand still. So she moved, moved all around, yeah. but where her center of gravity is was low. Um, and something felt like it didn't work, which is why it's so important to keep trying different things because of the stuff you find that doesn't work. So when it, I did something where I was dropped down here and I did a gesture that kind of was up here on the head. And I immediately went, that doesn't feel right for this character. And then I went back to, I kind of rubbed under my chin. I'm like, oh, that's right. So we have to just throw stuff in. When she said, can you try that? And I said, sure. Weight was in the hips. OK, shaklonk. Let's go. <laughs> you know, just jump in. And that's a really good point to make, too, is mm. you don't have to understand it. And you don't have to be able to have the skill level to be able to just express it immediately. It's not about fast. Yeah. It's about deep. Yes. yes. So the, the longer you play around with it, the easier it becomes. It's just like a kid's game. You know, yeah. the first time you play hopscotch, maybe not so good. But if you play every day, it becomes yes. very easy, yes. very easy. Same thing with this. Um, and there is that feeling of a center string or a mm -hmm. center rope that suspends, right? Yeah. Suspends. Yeah. And at the same time, for physical theater, while you're suspended, your heels are pressed into the floor. So it's this uh, oppositional stretch. I grew, I grew an inch. Um, I was 5'4 when I started college. And the more I studied this stuff over the last 25 years, 
I am now 5'5". Five five. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so if you'd like to be an inch taller, study this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, the way I was talking about with Del Sartre, mm -hmm. he was from France, and that was like 1890s. And his technique, not himself, but his technique moved to America and influenced the silent movies. So you'll still see it in... <laughs> oh, yeah. Right after Del Sartre, I think, is the technique you would like to teach. Yes, so who came along after Del Sartre was Etienne de Creux. That is, ATN starts with an E, and they will all, that man will also be in your notes. So he was from Paris, France, and he came to America in the 1950s. Now, ATN de Creux was not interested in set design. He didn't want glamorous lights and costumes, and he didn't even want the voice. He said, what can we take away from the actor to get to the purest meaning? This is what Luann has started with today, is the way we stand and how we communicate in our body and not even through our voice. So, Etienne de Creux took off the sets, he took off the costumes, he locked himself away with himself and just a couple of other students, and they practiced with nothing on except a loincloth and then like some sort of a mesh over their face. So they didn't even have the expression of the face. He wanted specifically the body. Now, he came up with like several thousand ways that the body can move, including the eyebrows. There were seven, se several hundred ways of how the eyebrows actually can move, what your choices are. We won't get into that today. But I would like to tell you about the five uh, planes of the body that he defined that came to America with him and is now a big part of physical theater. So. We want to make sure that we can see my feet. So are we in focus here, all the way to my feet? Back up me. OK. All right. So the five planes of the body, head, neck, chest, waist, and pelvis. Head neck, chest, waist, and pelvis. So what we're going to do, we'll talk about that in another lesson, but I want you to just keep that in mind, that there's five major blocks of the body. And the chest area, which is from the top of your, uh, of your rib cage um, to under, just underneath the rib cage. So it's your collarbone, excuse me, collarbone to under your rib cage. Your arms are an extension of the chest region, and your legs are an extension of your hip zone. So posture for us in physical theater, and that also came out of Decreux, and also is similar to Dessart with the string through the body. We're going to imagine and call it a plumb line, and that plumb line is right at the top of your um, spine, so the very top bump you feel. Imagine there's a, a little string there, and that's where it's pulled up, and it's suspended, click, into the top, into the ceiling, and you're hanging from it, you're suspended. At the same time, press your heels down into the floor. But remember, there's that plumb line lifting you up. Now what tends to happen, because we haven't said the head yet, what tends to happen is we're hanging there and we're dropped forward like this. We're gonna go ahead, take the head region, which is right underneath your jawbone, and we're gonna put it up on top of the spine. Okay, now we're gonna take the ribs, tuck them in, we're gonna take a corset or a heavy belt, take your hands, 
wrap them around your back to your front. And remember, this is not about fat. This is about your bones. I don't care if your hands are out here or they're out here. It's about what you feel inside. So take your hands, wrap them around. Imagine a tight belt that's sucking you in. And keep that engagement of the core. Now, uh, pull that all together. Pull up in the pull up with the string. Head on top. Shoulders are rolled back and down. Ribs are pressed under. Corset is tight. Whoosh. Belly button to spine. That means pull your belly button into your spine. And your hips, instead of them swaying, and a lot of females, we have that, that sway in our hips. Instead of it swaying, we're gonna tuck it under. But we're not gonna do the male thing of really going too far. A lot of times you see they'll sit back in their hips and then their head has to compensate because if they didn't, whoa, 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 fall back. So it ends up here. Find your neutral. Try that. Head is lifted, spine is lifted, shoulders are rolled back and down. Ribs are tucked so that they're not sticking out. Belly button to spine, 